Hey guys, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this video is about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Now, the simplified form of a rational expression has no common factors in the numerator and the denominator. Because we are working with fractions, there will be values of x that are excluded based on the original rational expression. So what I mean is simplified means cancel out everything you can cancel out, and even if you cancel something out, it may... Um, it may affect what values of x you can and can't have, just like when we have holes in our graph. So if I had something like AC over BC, it's not simplified until you cancel out those Cs, and you would say um, it equals A over B. However, you also have to put the caveat that B can't be 0, because you can't divide by 0, and C can't be 0. Whatever C was in the first place, it can't be 0, even though we cancel it out. Or if we had something like A plus C as a group times A over A plus C as a group times B, you can cancel out entire groups because the opposite of multiplication is division, and if I'm dividing something by itself, it equals 1. Um, and also, this is as long as B is not 0, and as long as A plus C added together is not 0. Even though we crossed it out, it still has to be A plus C is not 0. Now, you may have seen my uh, sign in my classroom, but every time you do something like this, where you cross out just a single term in a group, a kitten dies. You cannot do that. And let me prove it to you. What if I had 7 minus 5 over 2 minus 5? Okay? If I did the math on that, I would get 2 divided by negative 3, negative 2 thirds. If I said, oh, I can cross out those 5s and those minuses and just get 7 halves, well, 7 halves is not the answer. The answer is negative 2 thirds. They aren't even close. So, no, you can't do that. It just doesn't work, all right? It just, just breaks the laws of math. Do not kill any kittens in my classroom. Thank you. Okay, so the rules for solve or for simplifying these problems is always factor first. Always. You have to factor first. Well, didn't mean to turn it pink, but that's cool. Always factor first and then cross out any common factors. Um, do not cross out through things. Remember, we cannot cross out through addition or subtraction. So you have to factor first. Then you leave your final answers in factored form. I don't want to see everything all foiled out and multiplied out. That's ugly and not simplified. So let's do some example problems now. So here's our first example. We're going to simplify and state excluded values. We have 8x cubed minus 2x squared over 4x squared minus x. The first thing we have to do is factor. So in the numerator, I can take out 2 and x squared. That leaves me with 4x minus 1. In the denominator, all I can take out is x, and that leaves me with 4x minus 1. So now that my groups match, I can cancel them out. I can also take out one set of x's. So I can take out the squared and that x. And so I get 2x as my final answer. However, we have to think back. If we were graphing this, it would have holes in it. So we have to say x can't be 0, because if you set that equal to 0, you get 0, or 1 fourth, because if you set that equal to 0, you would get 1 fourth. So make sure you include your exclusions, 2x where x is not 0 or 1 fourth. And here's another one. Uh, this time, we have a cubic on top. Now, we just spent a whole chapter learning how to factor bigger polynomials. This one just so happens to group nice and pretty. And so when you group it, you can take out a 2x, and then you have, um, or 2x squared, actually. And then you have x minus 3 and then you can take out a 7, and that'll also leave you with x minus 3. And then x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, x plus 3 and x minus 3. 
Now we can cancel out our groups of x minus 3. And 2x squared plus 7 doesn't simplify any further, so the answer is 2x squared plus 7 over x plus 3, where x cannot be negative 3 or positive 3. Even though we cross that out, it still, um, it still affects our exclusions, just like you would have a whole. So now we're going to take our rational expressions and we're going to multiply some of them together. And just as a quick reminder, when you're multiplying fractions, you just do top times top and bottom times bottom. And then you reduce if you can. So here's a good example of um, a rational times a rational. First thing we need to do with this, just like any other, is factor. So when we factor 2x squared minus x minus 3, I'll save you the time spent factoring. I'm just going to assume you all know how to factor. And you get 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. When I have x squared plus x, I can take out an x, and I have x times x plus 1. 4x squared plus 4x, I can take out a 4x, and I have x plus 1. And the 2x minus 3, I can't factor anything out. So I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's a group. Now when you're multiplying, since we're just doing top times top and bottom times bottom, really, all I need to do is just extend this line. It's all of this times all of this over all of this times all of this. So now I can just start crossing things out that cancel out, like the x plus 1s, and the 2x minus 3s, and this x and this x. So we are left with 4 parentheses x plus 1. So if you were to graph that, it would be a line. However, just like when we um, did in the last chapter when we graphed, we would have holes at all three of those values. So you have to make a note of your original problem and say, and x can't be 0 or negative 1 or 3 halves, because we set each of the denominators equal to 0. Can't divide by 0. All right, I want to take just a second um, to uh, remind you about the sum of cubes and difference of cubes. We've memorized these in the past. If you've forgotten them, go back and memorize them again. You have to know these for this section because we're going to be factoring a lot of stuff, including sums and differences of cubes. Write them down if you don't remember them. All right, now we're going to do some dividing. Um, remember, when you divide anything, a, my, a divided by b, that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. And that will come in handy in a lot of stuff from here on out, algebra 2 and pre-cal and everything. You've got to remember, you can flip and multiply. Um, so here's an example. I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x plus 3 divided by, and whenever I see a divided by, I circle it so I don't miss it, divided by x plus 2. And then you should rewrite the problem and make sure that you flip over the second, only the second part. You never flip over what's before the divided by sign, only what's after the divided by sign. So if I factor x squared plus 4x plus 4, I have x plus 2, x plus 2, all over x plus 3. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal 1 over x plus 2. Now that I've got that all taken care of, I could start crossing stuff out. We can only cross out one set of x plus 2s. And our answer is going to be x plus 2 over x plus 3, where x does not equal negative 3 or negative 2. Look at all your denominators before you crossed out. So I'm going to give you one more example, and this one is a big one. This one has division and multiplication in it. So what I want you to do also, when I said circle your division, and we're going to flip this fraction and multiply, we're not going to flip this last one. This last one is being multiplied already. So only flip that middle fraction. So I'm going to do all my factoring, and then I'm going to flip that over uh, and rewrite it. All right, so 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 factors to 2x plus 3x plus 1, and then 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 is 2x plus 3 times x plus 2. Then I'm flipping this and multiplying it, so x squared minus 4 is the x plus 2x minus 2, 
And then x cubed plus 1 is a sum of cubes. So it's x plus 1, x squared minus 1, x plus 1. And then I leave the, back, the, the third one alone. Now x squared minus x plus 1 won't factor. So I have to leave it the way it is. And then um, I can take out a 2 and have x minus 2. So now I can start crossing stuff out, like this 2x plus 3, and this x plus 1, and this x plus 2. I could take out those x plus 2s. I could take out this x squared minus x plus 1, because those go together. And all I have left is nothing in the top and a 2 in the bottom. And be careful, some of you are going to be tempted to say the answer is 2. We have a 1 in the top and a 2 in the bottom. All the stuff that we canceled out equals 1. So the answer is 1 half, but we still need to say, as long as x is not negative 3 halves, or negative 2, or negative 1. See, look, I'm looking at all these denominators. I'm looking at this denominator, this denominator, this denominator. This denominator, if I set it equal to 0, isn't going to give me anything, so I don't have to worry about it. This denominator, that's going to be 2. And then you also have to look at the original problem, this denominator. So x can't be plus or minus 2, which we've already written down, so that's fine. But you have to look at every denominator that you have in your entire problem. And so now we have 1 half where x is not negative 3 halves, negative 2, negative 1, or positive 2. And I don't care what order you write those in. All right, so now we're done.